I'm going to show you a bunch of tips and tricks for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 that'll make the game either easier for you, more simple, or make sense of something that otherwise wouldn't really make sense. So let's jump right into it. First thing I want to tell you about is the map. So there's a little plus button on the right controller for the Nintendo Switch, and that's how you would bring the map up in some situations. But that map, if you bring it up, it will only show the area that you're in. Now, if you get it to open like that, it won't show, it'll only show the area that you're in. The a way to open the big map, like the real map, is to press X and then go to the actual map in the main menu here. And on this one, you can use L and R to switch between different regions and then press A to go into an actual region to look at it for fast travel reasons and stuff. Uh, instead of being stuck inside of the one. Now, if you want that quick one, uh, you can also set it to a hockey. So you hold L, and then on the bottom right, you can see all these different things. Uh, so right now, I have area map set to uh, X, which is uh, only from holding L. Hold L and press X, and then it will bring up uh, the area map like that. Which kind of brings me to my second tip here. So you, there's, if you hold L, there's these shortcuts at the bottom right when you're holding L, and you can edit them with the plus button, and then you can pick which one you want, uh, hit A, and then sh pick what you want to change it to. So in my case, I added a save button, so I can just, whenever I want to save, just hold L and press B, and it'll open up the save menu. So that's also another really useful tip that you should be taking advantage of to make your life a little bit easier when playing this game. So my next tip has to do with combat, and specifically the break, topple, daze combo that you will use in combat in order to give yourself a break, catch up on HP, stuff like that. There are some things you need to know about it. First off, let's go about what, how to know, how to even be able to do it. So you go to your characters, you know, chapter two, you'll learn how to um, swap classes and things. And then you can go into the classes and you can change each person. You want to make sure that you have, uh, and you'll unlock other classes later in the game, which makes this a little bit easier later on in the game. But in the beginning, there's um, one class for each of these abilities. So you go to your arts and you'll notice is icons. Well, yellow one means it's like an AOE on the ground. But the red one is either a break, topple, daze, knock down, blow down, one of those things. And the ones we're really interested in are break, topple, daze. So if you go over to this one, which this class is the uh, sword fighter, the sword fighter has a skill, for example, uh, sword strike, which has a little, it's a red icon, but it looks like two little like wave type things. Uh, you'll see when you select it here at the bottom right, it says reaction break. So break is how you start one of those chains, if you ever noticed the chain at all. Uh, and then the, the break has to be followed with a topple. So that would be, for example, this class has it, the heavy guard, has the bull rush ability that does a topple. And then the uh, uh, medic gunner class has a daze, they're called myopic screen. So if you do these back to back to back, then you can basically stun lock an enemy for a long time. Now it's hard to get this to happen because you're your allies will just throw down abilities kind of randomly, but there are a few ways to make it happen. The most important thing is to always control the character that you want to start the combo with because your your allies or the AI is much better at following up on a break than they are in um, starting one for you. So if you start one, they're actually much more likely to react to that and then follow up on it. Um, another trick that you can do is you can get in in the middle of a fight, you can swap to follow the leader if your party's in good shape in order to make sure that your allies don't use their cooldowns for a second. Um, and then you can start with a character that has the uh, top, the break, I mean, and go for the break. And if you get the break, then turn off follow the leader and let them use their abilities. And you're pretty much guaranteed to at least get a topple then. Now, depending on how it goes, like they kind of just threw down everything. So I'm sure you probably threw the days at the same time as the topple. So it's not ideal, but that'll at least guarantee the two combo. Another thing that you can do is if you know for sure the characters that uh, have the right abilities, you can try to swap through the characters and do it manually, but it is kind of tough because uh, they don't always have the ability up when you swap to them. So you can try to swap over to one of them and then like he doesn't, this one doesn't have the ability or you know, whatever. So it's kind of tough. So yeah, again, you can try to manipulate that with follow the leader. And then I guess the other way that you could guarantee it is you could get in combat, follow the leader, and then you could try to do it manually because now they all have their abilities. If you follow the leader long enough, they'll all have their abilities. And so then you can try to swap through real fast, go for the topple, and then uh, you just turn off follow the leader at that point because 
I'll just throw down abilities, and there, you get a daze, no matter what. Now, that takes some practice to get, like, the muscle memory for that down, but, uh, if you got that down good enough, you could take advantage of that. It also takes some uh, awareness to, during the fight, to know which characters have these abilities, swap through them, and once the cooldown's close to back, then do follow the leader to minimize that time where they aren't doing anything. Uh, and then you could even, during follow the leader, just swap to a healer and throw down the heal to keep everyone up while you're waiting for cooldowns. Make sure the healers are still doing their thing, you know what I mean? Uh, and then you would go back to the original trout one more time. And also something to know is that they can uh, resist. So if they resist, it doesn't mean that you can't do it on them. It just means they resisted that attempt. So don't get discouraged if they resist one of the things in the chain, the break or the topple or something like that. It's just they happen to resist it. But doing this will allow you to have a huge opening to heal your party, to regain HP. It's a really useful mechanic that you need to be aware of, and it makes the game a lot easier if you find ways to manipulate it so that you can uh, use it more often. And this is another tip now. We're going to the next tip. This one's really helpful, and it depends on what classes you have, though. But depending on what classes you have, sometimes they'll end up really spread out like this. And it just depends on what classes and what you need and whether or not you want them to be spread out. But like, if you have healers that do AoE healing and they're not going to heal everyone now because they're so spread out, you can turn on follow the leader, have them all group up, and then turn it off and just reset everyone like that. So now they're all fighting together. They can do the AoE heals and that kind of thing. That will make battling a lot easier. Like if you're just not paying attention to them and they end up spread out all around the enemy, then your tanks aren't going to get healed as well and it's just a lot harder. But also, you might want to be careful about doing that if the enemy has some insane AoE attack. But generally, most enemies, it's better just to take the AoE attack just so you can have AoE healing in like on everybody at once. The next really important tip that you need to know about is chain attacks. Not how to do them so much, but more about when to use them. Now, if you don't actually need them to beat an enemy, then you need to save them for when the enemy is almost dead then use it at the last possible second and that will allow you to overkill the enemy which gives an obscene amount of bonus experience so this enemy only gives i think like 200 something xp but you see his health bar up there i don't want to be you know you want to be careful not to waste it and not accidentally not accidentally not use it so give yourself a little bit of leniency but just go ahead and use it like right there and then you can start a chain attack when he's low and this will begin an overkill and overkills give you a crazy amount of XP. I'm halfway through it, and you'll see on the right the XP bonus of 286, and just as you do damage to this, uh, you'll get to see that that XP bonus goes higher and higher and higher. So you can get that really high, depending on how strong you are versus the enemy. So the weaker the enemy is, the higher you will get that percentage XP bonus. If the enemy's really weak, you will get to be stupid high. All right, so now we are on the last part of the chain attack. You'll get to see now. I was able to get the XP bonus too. We got one more thing because we got enough for the last at reactivation. And this will get the XP bonus from 365 up to 373% bonus XP. So now you'll get to see how much XP I got from this. I got 1,141 instead of like, I don't know, like 240 or something that normally gives whatever it was. So. Uh, definitely want to do that in order to level more effectively while playing. If you do that periodically while throughout the game, uh, you won't have to stop and level nearly as much, if at all, depending on your difficulty setting. Another tip that I want to include in this that's really important is running from two enemies that are too powerful. So, for example, this giant thing that I am not ready to fight in this zone on the save file. So what you'll do is if it fights you, instead of just running normally, uh, you want to pull out your weapon so your allies will fight it and hopefully it will attack them instead and then push in the right thumbstick to evade away. That's like the safer way. I'll show you in just a second because uh, otherwise if you just run, enemies, some, a lot of most enemies have this range where there's like unlimited range and they'll eventually hit you no matter what then and just smack you for like, you know, in this guy's case, 150,000 damage or something just stupid because of level scaling. So to show you what I mean, if I accidentally aggro this guy, Okay, this guy actually can't aggro. Okay, well, I'll have to aggro him manually, but you would want to pull out your sword. Okay, this is just not a right example. Let me find a better example. Okay, this is a better example, though. I'm over-leveled I'm over for this, but let's pretend this is strong. So if you 
accidentally aggro this guy, which I have to wait for him to turn around. Another tip, by the way, they have to face you to be able to aggro. So if I aggro, immediately pull out the weapon and do this instead. And then he's way more likely to swap to your allies and kill them instead so that you can get away. If you don't do that, the odds are significantly higher that he will just attack you instead and then kill you if he's super high level, he'll just one-shot you. And then another tip that while we're in this situation, if an enemy like that is guarding something, if you can aggro all the enemies that are guarding that are too powerful for you and then run away, it'll give you this weird opening to uh, get back. So like in that case right there, okay, so he's the only enemy there. He's not guarding anything, but if he was, I can now run back and he won't aggro. He'll actually just disappear in a second. And that's your opening to like send someone with the flute or open a container or whatever, and then they respawn. Now it gets confusing if there's like six enemies or something guarding something, because you have to somehow aggro all of them without getting killed and then run while they're killing your allies if they haven't killed you. So, but it's something you can do in order to loot items that the game developers obviously were trying to protect with some enemy you're supposed to kill. You can abuse that to get through narrow passages guarded by some strong enemy or get a container or something like that. That's also a really helpful tip to know about for sure. The last tip I want to give to you is another combat related one to make it a lot easier depending on where you are and what's going on. So if you find yourself in an area where the enemies are just too strong and you can't figure out how to beat them or if you just don't want to think and you just want the game to be a lot easier, what you can do is you can go to the menu after you unlock class selection, go to your characters and then go to the classes obviously and swap four of your characters to whatever the, the best AOE healing or whatever healing classes, just healing classes in general, depending on what you've unlocked. Uh, swap over, like say four of them to a healer and then the remaining two pick like an attacker and defender. Or if you really can't beat an area, try just going one tank and five healers. And then what will happen is, and especially have some healers that you don't want them all grouped because it might be an enemy that does some AOE, they'll just wipe them all since healers don't have as much HP. But like, what this will effectively do is you can go into a battle and you just have so much healing that you don't really have to do anything. Like, and I actually use this for farming if I'm feeling lazy, I'll just aggro an enemy and then just kind of go tab out because I'm playing on a computer, it's complicated, but whatever. But uh, so do this and then play with your phone or something and level up this way too. But you basically can't die if you do this. So if enemies are too strong, just swap over four healers, a tank and a, an attacker, or five healers and a tank, and then just wait for it to be over basically. I mean, you can use your abilities obviously and try to make it go faster, but with this you'll have so much healing, you'll just survive. Now if you want to make this even stupider, what you can do is you can go into the menu, go to your characters, and you can go to their accessories and gems and the ones that you set up as healers, just give them anything you can to boost their HP or defense or anything like that. Um, so we don't want that. We would want specifically ones that just flat out boost HP, uh, which I don't know if I even have any. Uh, boost, max, boost max HP. So you would just put things like that on your healers and then you would go to gems and you'd want to put on gems that like increase maximum HP or something like that, you know, to just make yourself, make them tankier. Then you're just like guaranteed to survive without even having to do anything in almost all battles in this entire game. So if you struggle with the battle system, that is like a cop out method that you should know about that will get you through most situations that would otherwise actually require coordination and switching between characters and topple days, break chains and things. So hopefully that one will help you out too. And that's all the tips and tricks that I have for you in this video. So hopefully between one of those, You'll have a better idea of what you're doing in this game. It'll be a little bit easier, and hopefully now you'll have more fun playing Xenoblade Chronicles 3.